Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we are going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper and your Bible. And let's get started. Is Jesus dead? Is Jesus dead? There are many, many world leaders that have left their marks on the pages of history. Religious gurus have helped shape culture and thought, but regardless of what they taught, accomplished, or achieved, they all have one thing in common. They are all dead. There was a point at which each mystic emperor and a philosopher came into being, and another point at which they exist, uh, ex 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 exited this world. We can visit their grave sites or memorials, and beneath the ground, their corpses or bone fragments are still there. And every leader, every prophet or king has died or will die. And once they die, that's it. They face the judgment of God just like any other human. The Bible told us in Hebrews 9.27 And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, judgment. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Hmm. But there's one exact, uh, what do you call it? Exception. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the one upon whom the entire world dating system is based. Jesus is not dead because he was not just a mere man. Jesus did not come into existent, uh, existence at a specific point in time. He has always existed as the Son of God. Remember what the Bible says in, in 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him there was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And of course we know in verse 14, it says, And the, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us among men, alright? So that, that word is Jesus. Alright? Think about uh, what Jesus told uh, the people when they were arguing about, you know, different stuff and Jesus rose up and told them in John 8, verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Should have sent some shocking waves to the people, at least to understand. If Abraham is their father, then why Jesus? Why why does Jesus say he was there before even Abraham? Jesus chose to leave heaven and enter this world in the form of a human baby. Luke 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall be overshadowed shall overshadow thee and therefore also that holy thing which thou which uh, shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God that holy thing was Jesus Philippians 2 from verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus was there from the beginning. And uh, we understand that although his mother was human, his father was God. Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man, living this earthly life so that he could become the intermediary between sinful mankind and God a holy creator. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. 
he suffered as we do, yet he never sinned. Hebrews 4.15 For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And we understand also, he always did what pleased his father. John 8.29 And he sent me, he that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. John 14, 31 But that the word, the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so, I do. Arise, let us go hence. And when the time came, he offered himself as the final sacrifice for our sins. We can confirm this from John 10, 18 No man taketh it from me, but I lay down I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my Father. This commandment I have received of my Father. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He says, For he has made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Likewise, Jesus was arrested and put on trial because he claimed to be God. John 5.18 Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not only had broken the Sabbath, but uh, said also that God was his father, making him equal with God. John 10.33 The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, being man, makest thyself God. They crucified him as it had been prophesied in Psalms 22 and Isaiah 53. It was prophesied that. And we can see the conclusion of the matter here in the book of uh, Luke 22 verse 37. It says, For I say unto you that this is that which was written. But must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning uh, me have an end. Hmm. So we understand as uh, Jesus hung on that cross, Jesus became very every sin that humanity has ever invented. Every sin, Jesus took it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And 1 John 2.2, he is a propitiation for our sins. And not only ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Jesus paid in full the price that we owe God so that we could be considered righteous and forgiven. Because when he cried out, it is finished in John 19 verse 30. He was not referring to his earthly life because he had already told his followers that God would raise him from the dead in three days. In Mark 9 31, and Mark 10, 33 to 34, he had already said that he will rise. He meant that the plan to redeem fallen men, which he and the Father had known from the beginning, and now this is the time when it was coming to completion. You understand that? Just go and read First Peter 1, 18 to 20, and Acts 2, 23, and Ephesians 1, 4. Jesus really did die physically and stayed dead for the better part of the three days. And he was bruised in a borrowed tomb because he would not be needing it for long. Matthew 27, 59 to 60, it gives us the picture here. It tells us, and when Joseph had taken the body, this is the Joseph of Arimathea, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb. So this tomb was uh, for Joseph which he had uh, hewn out in the rock and uh, he rolled a great stone to the door uh, of the sculpture and departed. And we understand that this tomb was uh, secured by Roman officials with a seal and a heavy boulder making it nearly impossible to open. Then guards were assigned to keep watch for fear that the disciples would try to steal the body and pretend that he had risen. 
as he had promised. In Matthew 27, 62 verse 6, uh, down to 66, gives us that event. Now, everyone was familiar with Jesus' prediction, even though no one understood exactly what it meant. Mark 9, 31, For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. You see, they knew, but they did not really understand. They they heard, but they never understood. And, and actually, of course, they feared to ask him. And of course, we see that the guards were an extra precaution requested by the Jewish religious leaders in an effort to silence forever the new teachings of Jesus of Nazareth that he had introduced into their culture. They figured that once the leader was dead and gone, the fervor of his followers would die down and things would go back again to the way they had been. Probably things would have settled down if Jesus had stayed in the tomb. And if Jesus had not risen from the dead, he would have been there would have been no different thing from any other zealous reformer. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote this and said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14, if, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. Are, are you seeing this? Then in verse 17 and uh, to 19, he writes, and if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Then those who are also uh, who also fall fell back in the days, or those who died, they're still asleep and dead and lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, then we are all people most to be pitied if Jesus could not have risen. But Jesus did not say dead. On the third day, just as he had said, he walked out of that tomb. The story is there in Matthew. Mark, Luke, John, everywhere is, is documented. An angel knocked the guards out, kicked the stone out of the way and started, sat on it, waiting for Jesus' friends to show up. Matthew 28 verse 2, it gives us the account. John as well gives us the account. And for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to over 500 people. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 7. It says, For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And after just dying for our sins and rising, he was seen of Cephas. Verse 5, He was seen of Cephas. Of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred and Brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then all of the apostles. You see, Jesus was seen by everyone after he rose. Okay? He was seen. This demonstrated that he was indeed fully physically alive. Then after that he ascended back into heaven in the sight of his disciples. And now we understand that Jesus is very much alive and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Hebrews 1.3 Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had, uh, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus ever lives to make intercession for his people and he has promised that he will come again. He endured separation from God so that we don't have to endure and that we have to conquer death. And he set himself apart from every other religious leader because there is no grave with his name on it. There is no tomb with his body on it. Only the Son of God could die the sins of the world then rise from the dead because of his resurrection who everybody who places their trust in him can have hope of a similar resurrection Jesus is not dead and because he lives we can live in eternity with him the Bible tells us 
in John 3:16 to 18. We know the account, and also John 14 verse 19. Let me conclude by reading this. John 14 verse 19. It says, Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me, because I live, you shall live also. Do you trust God? Do you put your trust in the risen Jesus? Are you still afraid that Jesus maybe might have died? No, there is evidence. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you learned something today. You can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to subscribe and favorite uh, our channels to always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. And if you'd like to support this uh, ministry or learn more about our ministry, please just visit our website keithmuoki.com k-e-i-t-h-m-u-o-k-i k-e-i-t-h-m-u-o-k-i keithmuoki.com and uh, you'll be able to learn more about us. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one.